live. Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another oh-so-delicious list, and today I'm very excited to be talking about my top 73 deck, bag, and pool-building games of all time. Now, why did I make it deck, uh, bag, and pool-building instead of just deck-building? Because that's how it's sorted on Board Game Geek. And if you're not familiar with this genre, this is a genre uh, where everyone normally will start with the same thing, and then the choices that you make will change your deck or change your whatever it is, uh, and we'll go through a whole bunch of different games like this. So everyone's normally going to start the same way, but how you decide to venture is the fun of the game. Now, I have played a lot of these games. I've played 73 of these games, and so I went through all of the thousands and thousands of Board Game Geek, picked out the ones that I have played, put them into a folder, and now we are going to put them in order with these six categories, which are great games, good games, forgettable games, uh, but are still good, meh, forgettable bad, and then the, 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 the bad, the bad. And I don't give too many bads, uh, I wouldn't be a reviewer, I don't think, if I didn't like that many games. Uh, I tend to like most games, or at least be able to appreciate what people were trying to do with a game. Uh, so let's just get off, let's get uh, started. Oh man, we're going, wow, wow, we're starting off with a big one here. Uh, we're going to go with Call to Adventure, which was a game that I really, really did not like. And I'm a slot in the bad. I did not get this game. You know, it just didn't do it for me. So essentially, this is a game uh, where you're you're living the life of this adventurer and going through a story, and uh, it's it's, no, it's almost forgettable bad. But it's it's bad because I was the first review out for this, and when you're the first review out for a game, especially when it's a uh, a Kickstarter game that has a lot of expectations, like this one did, because it's from the company who did uh, uh, Brotherwise games. Maybe I'm thinking of. Uh, I just did not like the game. Put it in the bad. I will say, though, I got absolutely blasted when having the first review. But since then, people have been like, yeah, well, we can see some of what you're saying. <laughs> so it's interesting. Now, let's get... I want to get that taste out of my mouth. I want to start off with a nice one. One game that I really think is very underappreciated is Trains. And I'm putting it in the great category. Trains is Dominion, but with a board. And you're going to be going all around the different maps. And there's tons of different maps. Um, so you'll be doing deck building and it's it feels very much like dominion and sometimes you'll literally be like oh this card is totally totally ripped uh ripped out of dominion uh but but the board play is great lots of different paths to victory and what i love about this and puts it in the great category for me is there's enough expansions if they're done with this game forever there's enough expansions and there's enough cards that trains is always going to be in my collection i really enjoy trains heck of a lot of game in that box uh, one that I, I really don't see many people talk about anymore, but still, I think it's a spectacular deck-building game. Also, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, uh, please be sure to click on that subscribe button, because I'm trying to hit 9,000 subscribers to celebrate my nine-year anniversary of covering board games. So next, we got one that I really... I, I, it's going immediately in the forgettable good. Viral is a really interesting game from... Um, I believe it was the Dice Tower Essentials line, and... Oh, they made... Oh, I'm drawing a blank of the company. They made Mage Wars. But this is a really mean area control game, if I recall correctly, like where your virus is inside of a human body trying to fight in different parts of the human body. It's a really good game. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to slap in the good. It's not forgettable good. The more I think about it, the more I think of just how unique and distinctive and cool this game was. It was just a little too mean for me. Uh, must Maybe dangerous. Oh my gosh. I hope everyone's okay. Is my extension all right? My live chat. I don't know why it's not popping up here, uh, but hopefully I'll get that figured out. All right, next. Whoa, are we going there? Are we going Mage Knight? Mage Knight's in the great. I have much respect for Mage Knight. I do not put it as high as a lot of other people, but that is only because I have not gotten the chance to play it enough. I know that. I know that if I really sat down with Mage Knight, and if there was like a Mage Knight weekend, I would come out of that saying, you know what, that's probably one of my top ten games of all time. Like, I think it's that good of a game when you really dig in the weeds of this. So this is a deck-building game uh, where you're going around a map, and it's, it's just excellent. But it is a heavier game. Uh, it's a more difficult game to learn for a lot of people, too. And I'm going to put it below Trains right for right now. I know that might sound sacrilegious, but I've played Trains a lot more. All right. Fantastica. Forgettable good. <laughs> this one was from Eagle Griffin Games, and I don't remember anything about this game at all. I played it, like, twice. And it was one of those games that's still on my shelf, and I actually haven't reviewed it. It's, like, my shelf of shame, where I didn't put up any content for it. I will one day, though, I promise. Uh, <laughs> and I remember it being like, eh, this is good. This is good. But, but nothing... There's a reason that no one's still talking about Fantastica. And I, it's, it's, it's good, but it's it's forgettable. All right. War Chest. Oof, oof. Got another one. This is really good. Ooh, is it great? I think it's great. 
I think War Chest is great. I'm going to put slap it at the bottom of great right now. This is a really interesting uh, game from AEG that is poker chips. These poker chips, and you're going around this board, and it's all about trying to... It's, it's like a fancier version of chess with special abilities, and it is really, really stinking good. I played the first one. I would love to take out the expansion. i got to be honest with you. AEG, now that I'm really talking about it out loud, might be my favorite publisher out right now. Uh, just, just everything I play from AEG, I'm just like, oh my gosh, it exceeds my expectations. And, and they are really, they are banging that drum right now, so good for them. Keep it up, Todd. All right. Ooh, sandwiches. <laughs> oh, the bad, 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 bad. You've never heard of this game. It was a Kickstarter game. It was terrible. Anytime you see a Kickstarter preview for me, that means that I probably don't recommend the game. Or in the video, I'll specifically say uh, why I gave it a preview. But this was bad. The rules were broken. Uh, it was, it was. I don't even remember it. I, I, this is one of those games. Should I put it in forgettable bad, though? No, I, I shouldn't put in Forgettable Bad because I very distinctly remember this game and it was just... Ugh. It was this dumb little card game and it never got funded on Kickstarter. The, the, the Kickstarter, I think, raised like $6 or something. Like, it was it was very low. Or maybe it did get funded. I don't know. It was bad news. <laughs> Go check it out if you want. But it's not a good game. What is a good game? A very underrated, underappreciated game uh, is Slapshot right here. And I'm sorry if the artwork's not the best. And Slapshot is a really unique hockey game where you're go you're it's a card driven hockey game. I remember it goes up to like eight players. I see it right now. I still have it in my collection, and I remember it leaving such a really positive effect on me that I, that I just uh, I'm gonna put it up here. But honestly, it might be at the top of Forgettable Good. No, we're gonna be honest here. Hasn't gotten played in like five years. Can you really? Can you really be? Uh, yeah. Okay. Got to be honest. Got to be true to myself. Also, hopefully the stream is going live uh, good, because I can't see live chat, but hopefully it's going good. So, next, we got Fight Your Friends. This doesn't feel like a deck builder to me. So this was one that I reviewed, and it was, um, it was good. I'll put it at the bottom of good. It's, a, it's good. Honestly, it's gonna go to forgettable good, but since I reviewed it, I think at the end of last summer, it's going there. But it was like this really simple two-player uh combat game where it's just like oh look at the numbers on the side of the cards and then match them up and try and do it but why it got funded and i thought this was a really unique idea uh by the creator at least this is what i assumed based on you know what what i looked at it was uh they just got every single card was just a different character from like a pretty obscure comic book like really really most of the super pretty obscure because i was like oh my gosh this is a whole bunch of different comic book characters i was like this could be big this could be a big video for me because all these different fan bases are going to be knowing about this game but uh the comic books were all like relatively small fan bases uh so but still a very cool idea and a great way to get a game funded because it, it got the game out of the world but unfortunately i, I don't think it's probably going to leave much of a mark which stinks all right what's next Battle for Souls. This one. This is a really good game. I think when I reviewed this, I thought it was a great game. And honestly, if we're being fair here, I think it does deserve to go in the great game category. It's a two-player game about, like, heaven and hell. And, no, I gotta go Forgettable Good. Top of Forgettable Good, though. But it just, it was a it was a heftier two-player game. Like, I think it was, like, maybe 45 to 130 minutes, which is just not normally what my wife's gonna want to play. And I don't get two-player games... Uh, out pretty much at all, unless it's with my son or with my wife. Uh, or on the, the stray... Man, that really bugs me. I can't see the live chat. Can I reload it? Will I, will I break everything? Oh my gosh, don't break it. I can't test it. I can't test that. Can't, I can't risk it. Can't risk that. All right, what do we got next? Uh, Legendary Encounters. This is the alien one. And man, it is so... It's great. It's great. This is one that I want to own one day. Like, when I'm living in an RV and I actually have to be very cautious with my space, I feel like games like this are going to be... Uh, just, just things that, because it, it really does an amazing job of recreating the movies. And I, I, in particular, uh, of all the legendary games, uh, that I've played, that's the one that I think I like the most. Now, I'm not going to list all of them because I tried like the James Bond one once. I want to at least have a feel for the game before I put it on here. And that's one thing I didn't mention at the beginning, but I, I tried to at least have a feel for the game. And I think that's what I'm going to start doing. Uh, so I have a feel for all these games. Whereas the James Bond one, I enjoyed it, but I still didn't, I don't think I could talk about it. Orleans, hey, what's up? You're the top. Might be number one. That might end in that spot right there. Orleans is one of my favorite games of all time. It is the, it's from uh, Tasty Minstrel Games. And if you've never played Orleans, do it. 
do it, do it. It's so good. It's a bag builder. And essentially, you're going to start with the same workers as everyone else, but then you are going to be uh, gaining different workers, doing a whole variety of different things. You can gain upgrades. You can gain tech upgrades. You can travel around this board and gather uh, things. You can become a great farmer. You can have a whole bunch of knights, which means you get to draw more things out of your bag, and it just... Well, it looked, it's, a, it's a beast to set up, it's a beast to store, it's a beast to put away. I, all those things, it's tokens upon tokens upon counters upon markers, but once they all get set up, I would never turn down a game of Orleans, uh, you know, if I have the time. It's just, and then when you get the expansion, don't even talk to me. So many people, so many people out there, you know Orleans, but you've never gotten that blue box. Get that blue box, grab that blue box, the Invasion expansion. It is, when I do the co-op list, Orleans might be my top cooperative game of all time. Maybe. I don't know. It's going in the great category. Spoiler alert. Uh, that's coming in a couple of weeks. But but it's so good. If you've never tried Orleans and you like medium weight ga euros, mm, absolutely believe the hype. Go pick that one up. All right. What do we got next? Ascension. Uh, one of the uh, big deck building games, and if I recall correctly, this is kind of a sneak peek. I was going through the deck building list, and they're doing a, re a new version of Ascension later this year coming to Kickstarter, which is going to be like the mega ultra super version of it, I guess. So if you're interested in Ascension, that's definitely something to do. For me, it's forgettable good. Right there. It just never did it for me. It wasn't my first deck builder, and I didn't really play it much on the app, and I know... A lot of people who really love it, love it on the app. And I just couldn't really get into it. I like Star Realms a lot better, and I just played the Star Realms app a lot more. Spoiler, that's going to be higher. But still, I, I do think it's a very good game. But, no, I'm not going forgettable. But, but, yeah, forgettable, because I don't really remember... You know what? I'm going to slide into good. It goes... It, it, it deserves to go up there. Because I do remember fighting the monsters, and it has a lot of really cool mechanisms, and I do like it, but not as much as Shards of Infinity, which I think is a very good... Very good little deck building game. It's actually, uh, they're from the same company, Stoneblade Entertainment. And uh, I think Shards of Infinity is just a better game. And, I, and it comes in a small box. I still have the boxes like this this size. And the expansion's even like a smaller box. So it's, a, but it, it is, it packs a whole bunch of good deck building goodness in there. And if you're in the market for a smaller box deck builder, Shards of Infinity, absolutely recommend. Would recommend. Hopefully one day it gets like a solo expansion. I think that would be good for it. All right, five viewers, thank you for joining. I wish I could talk to you. All right, Islebound. Story time. I think I mentioned this last time. Uh, I was in Denver when I played this. It was super dupe duper not in the regular state of mind. It was high. Because <laughs> um, it's legal in Denver. And I don't remember much about this game. And I played it twice now. Uh, the first time was before that, though. And that was at a convention, which is kind of different. But it just... It, it, it didn't... I remember you go around the sea, you uncover tiles, there's cool stuff, and it's good, but it's, it's forgettable good, and honestly, I'd re I would rather play it than Fantastic again. I would. Dominion. Oh, wow, we're going there. We're going there already? Why is he burying the lead? You should be saving this for the end, right? It's juicy. Where's it going? Where's it going? Just, ooh, so this is a tough one for me. So this is really quantity versus quality sort of argument from here, uh, because I think Trains, honestly, is a better game than Dominion. But... Because of the amount of disc expansions that Dominion has, I'm putting ahead of trains. You know, if I got a Desert Island game and I got, you know, two, three, four people, I want Dominion with all the expansions. There is literally a million hours of entertainment there. You never see the same combination twice. Just just Donald X Vaccarino nailed it out of the freaking park. And uh, it, it created this whole list. It created this whole genre. The granddaddy of them, Dominion. But it's not better than Orleans. Come on, get out of here. All right, what do we got next? Expedition. This is a really cool game. It's a great game. It's a great game you need to know about. It is a role tell, uh, role telling, role playing game. But it's it's ran through like an app, and you get to make the choices. It's not it's not quite role playing, but it's really stinking cool. And I played with the kids in my class, and I loved it. I'm gonna slot it right there. I don't think it's better than War Chess. And it has a whole bunch of different expansions, and, like, you can write stories and then share those on the app, and it's got, like, a whole community. It is really spectacular. If you want if you want to work on your kids with, like, speech development, or you want to get them into uh, public speaking or speaking or just anything like that, if you're just trying to get them to open up, Expedition is an excellent game to check out. Small box, too. It's cheap. Probably, like, 20 bucks. Really, really stinking cool game, though. 
All right, what do we got? So I got an idea. I got a crazy idea. What if I copy this? I'm gonna copy this. Whoa. Open new window. Boom. Will it work? Will it work? Trick it. Give me it. Give me it. Give me that chat. Give me that chat. I want that chat. All right, what do we got? Dice Forge. Really great game. Really great. Played this three times. Uh, I don't own it. It's very good. Very good. Very good. Better than Dice Forge. Shards of Infinity. Yeah, I, I would. I, I really enjoyed Dice Forge. <sighs> Not, you know what? Ugh, I can't put it in Forgettable Good. I played it three times. I don't remember. You're going around in like a circle. It's very good. You know what? Forgettable Good. Top of Forgettable Good. I can tell you more about Fight Your Friends than I can about Dice Forge. What does that say? What does that say? I don't even know. So chat. Let there be chat. Go! There's chat! Yay! Awesome. All right. Hopefully it doesn't break the stream. Do we have two multiverses going? Are there two portals? All right, what do we got? Oh, forgettable. Oh, no, I think this one's meh. So, Eaten by Zombies. This is one of the earlier deck builders. So, this is one of the first deck builders that came out after Dominion. And it's from, I believe, Mayday Games. And it was... <sighs> eh. You know, it was forgettable. And it was meh. I don't remember what was special about it. And they get it at a Kickstarter. The, re the way I got this game is because I did... Uh, I think I did a video for the expansion that came to Kickstarter, but, uh, you know, nothing happened with it. Nothing happened with it. Harry Potter, deck-building game. This one is a really interesting game. Because this game, if you're a Harry Potter fan, you come into this with such hot... You want it to be... You want it to be spectacular. You want to feel that Harry Potter magic in the game, and I think they do a good job of that. It is a little too basic for me with the beginner game. You know, and by the end of the game, it does ramp up. And I do think it's difficult, which I like it. You know what? No. <sighs> yeah, I'm going great. I'm going great family game. I was thinking good. I was thinking top of good. But no, I'm going great. I think if your family likes Harry Potter and they are in the 7 to, you know, 7 plus range. And they know games, at least. You know, obviously, don't spring this as your first game on them. This is a great one to check out. Great one. All right. What do we got next? Pixel Glory forgettable uh was this one bad i don't remember if this was bad or meh i remember i wasn't i didn't think it was great i'm gonna go with the i don't feel comfortable putting in forgettable bad because i don't remember if it was bad which probably means it was meh because it was good i rem i would remember i'd be like oh yeah pixel glory that was good but i remember this one just not not doing something for me all right guns and steel this one was forgettable good this was a small box games from Tasty Missile Games. Uh, they made a whole boatload of small box games. I wonder how those sold. I really do, because there were they were so many of them. And uh, so many of them I never heard anyone talk about ever at any point at all. <laughs> uh, which is bad. That's bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. But no, I think it's actually a better game than Fantastica. But I don't remember why. I don't remember anything about it. It was good, though. All right, for glory. This is great. Going towards the top. Now, this one, I gotta, I gotta warn you. This one is a recent game. It came out near the end of 2020, so I do have those, you know, vision of uh, seeing it right now, playing it two or three times, and being like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Each and every time. Uh, but I did. I really thought it was just a great game each and every time. And yeah, I'm gonna put it above War Chest. I'm not going to go Mage Knight area. But Four Glory is a really stinking cool deck building slash gladiatorial combat game in which there's two very distinct phases. The first one is the deck building phase where you're actually going to be drafting from three separate piles. You have three different buy piles. One's going to give you like these really cool gladiators that will each have their own unique cool asymmetrical speeds and special abilities and triggers and all sorts of things. Like there's a lot of variability in that one pile. And then the next pile is going to be the people who uh, pay for your Bacchus or whatever it's called. They're the people who essentially are going to give you be giving you the money. Uh, but they'll also be there and they, they might you know, uh, heal some things. They might do some different quirky things. Once again, tons of asymmetrical abilities. And then you have the, the final one, which is going to normally impact when you finally get into the gladiatorial combat, which is spectacular. It's its own separate phase, and it's delightful. You take your gladiators, they fight, you play cards. Beautiful game. I can't wait to play more of it. I can't wait for an expansion. Coin and Crowns. Forgettable good. I don't remember anything about this game. Played it twice in my classroom. I was hoping to shoot a review on it, <clears throat> and like a week later, I was I sat down to shoot it, and I was like, I don't remember a dang thing about this game. <laughs> uh, but I 
did. I would rather play it than Fantastica. And Guns of Steel. That's where I stop. Much respect for Brian Lockett. <laughs> Castles of Dawnstone. This one, I need to get back to the table. This is a two-player, uh, what was it? I believe it was Worker Placement Deck Builder. It's on Game Crafter. And it's, it's, it's very good. It's very good. I would, I would like to revisit this over everything. Yeah, yeah. That's how good I think it is. I think it could potentially get into the great category if I got a couple more plays of it, honestly. I think it's that good. If you're into Game Crafter games, if you like, if you don't mind the components being whatevers and you're willing to give it a whirl, uh, definitely check that out. Is the stream looking good? The audio's current bit rate. Uh, let me know if that's going all right. The bit rates of the stream is going good, please. All right, Heart of Crown. This is a very, absolutely great deck building game. Nobody knows about it. It's got like four or five expansions. But nobody knows about it because it's in the Japanime games lineup. And, and when you see the Japanime games lineup, they have like four different deck building games. And they're all just, you know, big breasted uh, J Japanese artwork. And I'm not saying that in a negative way or a positive way. I'm just saying in it, it, it kind of make it, it makes it hard for the game to really stand out. Because there's like Barbarossa, where, where they're like in the military, and then there's uh, Taunty Koro, where they're, uh, yeah, and then there's this. And what sets it apart? Nothing sets it apart. Which is unfortunate, because I think if this had as much attention as Trains or any of these other, a lot of these other top tier games, I think people would absolutely go nuts for this game. It does some really unique, cool things in deck building. And honestly, when I shot the review, I, I thought it was better than Dominion. And I still do think it kind of is better than Dominion. But once again, when I get out Dominion, I got six boxes of Dominion. And I only got like two boxes of Heart of Crown. So this one's going to go... We're going to slot it right there. Mm, yeah, right there. Nope, right there. I would rather play Expedition with my son. All right, paperback. This is a gross... It's a good. It's a good. It's a great. This is a spelling deck building game. This is great. This is a great game. Man, I'm going to have a lot of greats. And, and if you didn't notice, this is actually one of my favorite genres. Worker placement and deck builder are my jam. Uh, this is a great game. Hardback is also really good. Uh, but I don't think that's actually on the list for whatever reason. It didn't pop up in the BGG thing. <sighs> yeah. I'm going to put paperback right there. When I shot the review, I loved the game. And I've played it probably four or five times since then. And it just it, every time, I just really enjoy it. I gotta do a, oh I gotta do a word game list. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, next Saturday night we're gonna be doing a different list. It will be the top auction and bidding games. I don't know how many games that is, uh, but those are those are games I also really enjoy as well. Century Spice Road, the first one. This is the Golden Arcana edition, but they're, they're the same game, just with different artwork. It's a very good game. Is it great? I really like this game. I don't think it's a great game because if I'm being, if I'm being honest, I would rather play Splendor. And I think Splendor, you know, is just in that same ballpark. You know, they're different games. This one's all about upgrading your gems to different colors and the production quality is absolutely gorgeous. And I've played this game. I probably played this game 10 times in the last year or two. Like this is one of the go-tos for my game night and it's not me ever suggesting it. Uh, but my, my group really, really likes this game. And I don't know. It just... It all felt very mechanical for me. And I think my biggest issue with it is... I have no analysis paralysis in that game, ever. My turn is always immediate. Like, it's like, I know exactly what my next four moves are going to be. That's how I play that game. For, for whatever reason, my brain completely wraps around Emerson's game. Uh, my brain does. And and, I, and and so whatever, there's just downtime between turns. Because it's like, I go, just boop, I'm done. And then it's like, somebody takes like a minute to take their turn, and I'm just like, oh. Because, I, I don't know. It's just not the game for me. You know? Because I know it's a good, very good game. Alright. Lost Ruins of Arnak. This is a... It's a very good to great game. I really, really like it. But here's the thing about Lost Ruins of Arnak. It does work placement, it does deck building, it does racing, and it does it all really, really well. But I don't think it does any of it amazing. Like, it all works, and it comes together 
like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And it's just oh so yummy. But over here, there's creme brulee. Orleans is creme blue brulee every time. You know? And so for that, I, I think I gotta go top of good. Because I played this, I played the first two times and I was really into it. Third time I got into it, I was like, you know, I like it, but I like when a game gives me different paths to victory. And in Lost Ruins of Arnak, I felt like they were, like, I don't know. I still think it's a great game. A very good game. You know what? I'm not going to go great. You know what? Yeah, okay, that's fair. I'm going to go, I'm going to go bad. It it is a great game. I don't want to undersell that. Arkham Horror, the card game. Wow, this great list is getting stupid. Because this Arkham Horror card game, I love it. I absolutely love it. (laughs) My buddy Jeremy hates it. Hates this game. I love it. Uh, My friend Lucy, one of my co-hosts on uh, the Thoughts from the Corner, she is a humongous fan of this. And I agree. We actually got together and played this a couple months ago and had a blast. It's very complex uh, to get into, I think. But once you know what you're doing, it's, it's not terribly difficult. Yeah, it's there. When I talk about my RV in the future, where I, ha- where I have to limit games, that Arkham Horror game is in there. Because I, I like it solo, and I know my wife actually somewhat enjoyed that game. So I would love... Yeah, that's the LCG model, so I could be pumping out expansions for that every single three months or whatever it is. Uh, thank you very much for letting me know that seems good. Uh, but they're going to be pumping that out. L- they they pump the LCGs hard. Hyperborea! Forgettable good. Played this one twice. My buddy Ronnie used to own it. And I enjoyed it. I remember being very disappointed because it looked thematic as all get out and then it was just crunchy, crunchy Euro. But I like crunchy, crunchy Euro. And honestly, of the forgettable good category, man, I don't, I don't want to put it, see, like, ah, that's what, that's what's so weird about this. Like, I feel like in reality, if this were my game, it would be here or potentially even here if it has an expansion. But now, because I've only played it, you know, those two times years ago, I put it here <laughs> below Fight Your Friends. And, and Hyperborea is actually a really solid game. Revenants. This was a one that kind of came and gone. Had the Mad Max theme. It was from the same people who did Castle Panic. I'm drawing a blank on their name. Um, and it was a cool game. About going to the desert and finding resources and facing enemies. And I thought it was good. But forgettable good. And I would rather go back to Islebound. Hero Realms. It's like Star Realms, but with wizards and stuff. And unfortunately, they seem to have put more stock in the Hero Realms than the Star Realms at this point, which I find really disappointing because I'm more of a Star Realms fan. But obviously, (laughs) you know, they're going to go with whichever one's selling the best. Which tells me that Hero Realms probably was selling gangbusters. And I can see why. There is a lot of really cool content on here. And I do think it's still a great game. And I honestly would rather play it than a lot of these games. Wow. This makes me think. I give a Bower's Best Seal to Ford Glory. But I want to put Hero Realms like above it because I know that there is just... There's tens... There's maybe a hundreds of hours, potentially. That, that seems a bit. There's tens of hours of enjoyment uh, and exploration, because there's like a campaign game with Hero Realms. There's tons of different things. I'll put it right there. But honestly, that one, that could low-key be one of my favorite games of all time when it gets down to it. And that should tell you just how much I love Star Realms, because I still think Star Realms is a better game. By, by a good deal, actually. So, wow. Whew. White Wizard Games, crushing it. There's too much praise going on right now. So now we're going to talk about Kamigami Battles, which will go straight to the bottom of the bed. Wow. I don't get it. I know there's a boatloads of expansions for it, but I will be brutally honest in saying this. And if you have a game group, you know exactly what your game is. And let me know in the chat. I actually am very interested to know what yours is. Uh, you have a game at your game group, which is the, the sacrificial lamb. It is the one that you always mock. Where, you're, where, like, at the beginning of your game, like, oh my god, I hope this isn't another Kamigami Battles. The Kamigami Battles is my game night's uh, game that we mock relentlessly. We, uh, we played that, and we got uh, into it after about an hour and change, and it was, it was just absolutely terrible. We quit the game. And we don't ever quit games. 
Like, I'm always like, we can, we'll power through this. We got to at least do it. And that's honestly, this is a little behind, uh, behind the scenes corner thing. Uh, that's start, part of the reason why I started doing behind the corner was for games that I hated so much after one gameplay. And reading the rules, and I was just like, no, 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 no. We're never, we're never going through this ever again. No human will ever be subjected to Bowers Game Corp. You know, uh, there's there's some games like that <laughs> that we get that were just not good. And this was one of them. And I still have it because we didn't actually shoot a video on it. And one day I will shoot a video on it because I say I'm going to shoot a video on every single game. Oh, every single game. <laughs> and, and this one's going to be a rough one. But one day I will get through Kamigami Battles and it will go immediately into the kill closet. All right, the cursed, the few and cursed. This was a big Kickstarter uh, box. You know, I shouldn't even say that now with minis games going nuts. But for actual board games that are not minis games, because this one has minis, but it's not really a minis game. Like the the, the bosses and the monsters are minis, uh, but there's not that many of them. But this was a really ambitious game. And at the beginning of this, I said I love, even when games don't necessarily succeed, I love seeing when games really try and swing for the fences. And... The Few and the Cursed is a game that really swung for the fences, and it ended up being a bit clunky, I do think. And it's really a, a much better two-player experience, than, and I think it goes up to five. And I would, oh my god, no, it would be terrible at five. It would, the downtime would be insane. And I think one day it will slip into the forgettable good, but I really, it was ambitious. And I don't remember what was so ambitious about it. I know you're going around a map. You're cowboys. You're rolling dice. You can, there's, you can go into the town. You're looking for items. You equip your stuff. It's really cool. But do I want to revisit it? It's a big time thing. Yeah. Are, are we kidding me here? <laughs> Fight your friends. No longer the laughing stock of the good category. Uh, because the few and cursed. Like, I have no desire to revisit that game. You know, because uh, I've forgotten the rules, and, and I remember, just no. <laughs> Carthage, one that I would like to actually revisit. This is another gladiatoral combat deck-building game, number two. Uh, and this one was actually more, not card-based combat, but there was actually these, these little pieces that you would have on this board, and you would be moving around, and it was a really good game. It was really, really good. It could it could creep up to the great potentially, and I, but I'm going to put it here with like Castles of Dawnstone. I think this is really going to be the area for like these really games that I think I I just I don't feel comfortable calling them great because I haven't played them enough to really say oh these are great. And I can see myself playing this ten times, uh, but these ones they they have that potential. They definitely have that potential as their shards of infinity. I think. All right, another one in that the exact same category: Brides and Brides. This one I did a Kickstarter video for. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. It is a really stinking cool game where uh, it's it's all about trying to marry off like people to certain people, but there's like it, it's it's not point salad, but it reminds me of Orleans that there's there's different you got a lot of different plates spinning in the game, and I love when games give me lots of different plates to try and spin and like oh I gotta I gotta make sure they all stay up, and this one did that well. Unfortunately, I yeah I'm gonna put in the good right there. These three I'd like to revisit some more. And I actually still own this one. That's how much I did enjoy it. I actually own all three of those. I think I got rid of my roll. I wish I wouldn't have done that. All right, Big Book of Magic. Okay, we have the, the, the very seldom used meh. Meh. I played this. My buddy Ronnie had it. Same guy with Hyperborea. Actually, cool. Hey, Ronnie's got the Big Book and Hyperborea right next to each other. And it, we played it, and I think we played it three or four times, maybe. And he really, really liked it. It's cooperative, and uh, you're, you're making magic, and you're trying to kill stuff. And it, uh, it just never did it for me. Like, I always played it. I was like, yeah, it's okay. It just never did it for me. I don't know why. But I think most people would probably have this in the uh, good to forgettable good category. Lord of the Rings. Which one is this? Is this the first one or the second one? This is the first one. First one I really enjoyed. First one I thought was a really stinking good game. It might be in the great category. No, let's not be let's not be ridiculous here. I'm gonna put it right there. The good. I think it's a, I think it's a good game. Uh, and so they had the Lord of the Rings and they had the Lord of the Rings two. And let's just not bury the lead here. I thought the Lord of the Rings two is bad, 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 bad. As bad as sandwiches though. No, that's not fair. And yeah, top of the bad. If I recall correctly. Because I've, I still own the game, actually, because you know I have all three, and I want to, I want to, I want to eventually mix all three together. I don't even remember you can do that because there's one card in the the second one which is like just stupid. 
Like, I don't remember what's so stupid about it, but it's so stupid that I'm mad about that stupid card right now. And if you go to the BGG page, uh, I bet, I bet, I bet you'll see a bunch of people complaining about it. As I pointed out before, Kamigami Battles was a revised, improved version of another game by Japanime. Seriously, WTF. Hmm. How bad was the original game? Oh, wow. How bad was the original game? I don't know. But it wasn't for us, like, uh, I, uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't even want to revisit it to find out, but I will one day. Friday is a game that I always find myself playing once every year or so. It is a really delight, delight, delightful little solo game from Friedman Fries, who is a designer that I really do enjoy. And I actually got another one of his games coming in the mail. Ooh, and it's a deck building game. Ah, I'm so excited. Oh, but that'll be for next year's list. Womp womp. Uh, okay, but anyway, I don't even know if we'll do another one next year. That seems a bit redundant, but maybe. Friday though, is a very delightful... It's a great little solo game. Mm, mm, yep. That's where we go. Here's the thing about Friday. Friday is complete. There is no more. Like, the game is done. And I don't ever expect him to release an expansion for it, unfortunately. Uh, but I think that's because it's just it just feels like such a well-balanced game. And it's insanely difficult. Oh my god, it is hair ripping out difficult but it is an absolutely delightful little solo adventure that i recommend you take boxes about this small you can take everything out take it with you on an airplane great little game but the big thing is uh it actually uh, has a robinson crusoe feel if you played the uh, the portal game one where decisions you make will come back to potentially hurt you uh and after this next one i am going to take a 21 second break real quick so let's talk about one that i have in the meh category and honestly is it forgettable bad? This was uh, something Inventions. I don't remember the name of it. Because it cut it off. It's from Mayday Games. It's a small box game. And it was meh. I don't think it was bad. But it's meh. Yeah. You make Inventions. Not spectacular. Uh, I remember playing it uh, two or three times and just being like, every time I was like, hey, there's a game. And everybody wants, it's not one of those ones where it's like, oh, this is terrible. I don't believe it. It was just like, I'm cool if we never play that again. <laughs> and that was uh, Crazy Inventions, I think it was. So now, 21 second break. Whoa, didn't see the drop kick coming. Nobody ever does. All right, that wasn't a drop kick. Spin kick, whatever. I don't know what it's called. What do we got next? Adapt. This is a game that also did not do it for me. It's from my buddy John and uh, from Gatekeeper Games. And it's about uh, like making fish or something. It, was, it had pretty, really pretty dice because that's, that's like his jam. He makes these absolutely gorgeous half-seas dice, which are... Uh, spectacular. Yeah, one has anime mates. So that is the Twenty Koro, I believe it is. <laughs> Twenty Koro is such a weird game, by the way. You're, like, trying to get people to, like, make... I, I don't even know. It's like a dating simulator in some points where you're trying to get people together. It's weird. Adapt is meh. And honestly... I don't, uh, yeah, I gotta do it. I didn't like it. Like, I actively did not like playing it. But I still own it, because I didn't, I didn't... I don't think I did any content on it. But I really, I didn't like it. I don't remember why I didn't like it. I just don't, like these ones, like there was reasons. That stupid card. Uh, but th this one, I don't remember what it was. Baby Dragon Bedtime. Meh. Meh, 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 meh. So this was supposed to be the first, uh, my first deck building game, which got me excited. And you know what? It's not, f it's not fair to put in the meh because I haven't played it. There's, there's two different game modes. There's one where you play it real-time, and there's one where you don't play it real-time. And I really hated playing it the first time, because we played it not, like, fast and frantic. So I do need to revisit it, and I still have it up there, because I think it will be better. I think it will be better. But for now, it's a big meh. But I'm going to put it to the top of the meh, because I am kind of excited to try it. Uh, I, I always like when I see children's games that use our mechanisms. I love when I see that. All right, what do we got next? Resident Evil, the deck building game. 
This is one of quite a few expansions as well. Like, this was a big thing for a while. And it was, uh, I remember my buddy Ronnie teaching me this. Man, I miss Ronnie. And it was good. This is, this is like one of his gateway games. And for me, it was good. It was, it was good. But it was, I would rather revisit it than Ascension. But that's more just out of curiosity as well. Vikings gone wild. To the great you go. But here's the question. Where do we stop? As you can see, I, I love the deck building genre. I'm looking right here, and it's like there's so many deck builders up here. Vikings Gone Wild is a really unique case study, because it, I don't feel like it does anything different. Like, you know, Trains did the board, and it did stuff different, and Fort Glory does this different, and things do, you know, some of these deck builders are samey, and some just, ugh. And, and Vikings Gone Wild just had so many things. Like, it has these static by rows where things don't change, and it has a whole bunch of those, but then it also has uh, the moving by row, but then it also has buildings you can buy, and you can upgrade buildings, and it just has tons of different mechanisms. And I love when games throw together tons of different mechanisms. It has good expansions. It has a uh, Bauer promo card in it, which I would love to get blown up one day. I really should get a poster of that. I think that'd be cool. Um... Bowers House of Magic, I think it is. But, 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 uh, yeah, we're going ahead of trains. But well, I can't do Dominion. I can't do Dominion. Maybe, you know, in like five years when Vince does, uh, you know, Vikings Gone Wild, the deluxe edition. And it's just absolutely. Could you imagine if Lucky Duck Games did a premium game? Oh my gosh. Get out of here. They're going to get into it one day. And it's going to make, it's going to break Kickstarter. No, it's going to break Game Founder. Oh, oh, you smart, Awaken Realms. You smart. You're so smart. Whoa, boy. While it was out, RE deck building game was so much fun, but it did run its course. Yeah, I remember pumping it. I think there was there was quite a few expansions for it. Maybe two or three. Speaking of expansions, Legendary. And I have... I, I God. Legendary is a little bit... Coming back to Lucky Duck Games, is a little bit like Chronicles of Crime for me. Every single time I play Legendary, I enjoy playing Legendary. But I... Like it the least out of everyone at the table. You ever had that where it's like, yeah, I liked it, but everybody else is like, this is amazing. You're like, yeah, it was good. I always feel that way about Legendary. Every single time, everybody has more fun than me. And I love superheroes, and I love the idea of combining all the powers and the synergies. And it just, something about the game has never clicked with me. I probably played it ten times. Because a buddy of mine absolutely loves this. He's got a huge box. Weighs like <laughs> ten freaking pounds. But, uh, is that a lot? I don't know. Yeah, it's a lot. But I'd still rather play it. Yeah, we gotta go respect here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fair. Right there. Right there. I'll show you some respect. But I think Carthage. Carthage is really underrated. I do think it's a very good game. Cry Havoc. Another very good game. Ronnie's game as well. Dang it, Ronnie! You got all the good games! Actually, you've got all the forgettable good games. Uh, but this, once again, uh, Area Control... Little minis moving around the map. Portal games. Who, who I norm, And I will say this about portal games. I don't like every portal game. But every portal game that I've played, I always say, dang, I like what they tried to do there. And when I love when people swing for the fences. And it feels like Ignacy always uh, swings for the fences with the games that he publishes. And I like seeing that. And I would rather revisit this than Legendary. It's a very good game. Grifters. This is an interesting one. So this, I did a Kickstarter video for it when it was called, like, Die You Dirty Rat Scum or something. That was a Kickstarter. And I thought it was bad. But I'm pretty sure if I recall correctly, because it's a preview, so I, you know, I didn't say this. I think the reason why I didn't like it was because I think the rules were crap. And then it got picked up by any board and cards. Something about it did not go with me. And I was like, I don't actually like this game. I put it in the bad category. But I, I actually got a chance to play it uh, two or three times since then, my buddy Jimmy really likes this game, and I really enjoy it. I don't remember what I like about it, so it's in the forgettable good category. But it gets me like Slapshot feels. Not quite Slapshot feels, but close to Slapshot feels. Man, I, you know what? Slapshot feels. Uh, slapshot feels. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm remembering, you know, I'm lapsing in my memory more games where, where I played Slapshot. I remember really loving the snot out of it. 
I gotta get that one back to the table. Master of the Galaxy. Oh, it hurts me. It hurts me so much. I was so high on this game when it came out. It was so good. Uh, it's it's a 4x game, but it's got all these different space races, and the board's cool, and it's but the rules were a beast to get through, and I'm never gonna get it back to the table ever. <laughs> And it will go into the lost games through time, like Battle for Souls, and so it shall go right next to Battle for Souls. But I would rather play Dice Forge. Yeah, that's one of those games, man. Ah, uh, it's so good. It's really good. <laughs> but I don't remember why, and I don't want to go to the rules, and I never will ever again. Oh my gosh, yeah, Paul Grogan and Portal. Get them in the same room. Love it. Love it. Feudalia! Speaking of love, and this game has an expansion. This goes to the great. This is also one that, uh, once again, I've not played in a couple of years just because the rules, I don't remember the rules at all. And I would have to, this would be the one where I would want to know that I'm probably going to play it a couple times over the next few weeks. But it's a really great deck building game. And we don't have a forgettable great, which means we're going to have to put this at the bottom of, of great. But it's, it's meaty, it's intense, but I don't remember much about it. But I know it will stay in my collection because, dang it, I'm going to play that game before I get rid of that game. Because I remember how stinking good it is. And I'm sure once I actually play it, I'll be like, you know what? I'm not going to get rid of that. I'll slide it back on the shelf and we'll be talking about it in five years. Woo! DC deck building game. Also goes in that same category. Uh, this one I absolutely adored when it came out. I gave it Bauer's best seal on it. I got some expansions. Love playing the expansions. I'm looking at it right now. And... Uh... But there's a reason that it hasn't got played. And there's a reason why I'd rather play it than Trains. You know, I'd rather play Trains than this. And I say to myself, is it a great game if I would rather play all these games than it? And I say yes, because I still would rather play it than Karthus. It's kind of odd. I feel like I'm really doing this well in my own personal brain. Like, I feel like this is actually a pretty good encapsulation of uh, my rankings of these. The forgettable good-bad categories are cracking me up. Very on point. This is indeed how I think and talk about games. Huh? Well, good. Good. I'm glad to know it's not just uh, me. Star Realms. Here we go. Here we go. Top shot. Let's go. Ooh. I'm putting that there for now. It's a placeholder. But Orleans versus Star Realms. That's, that's, oh my gosh. That's steak versus cake. I don't even know what to say. Star Realm, tiny little box, you know, and, and yes, obviously you got more cards, you got the big beast, you're gonna, you're gonna not gonna use that box anymore, but it's still, I was, I was introduced to this game at a, uh, a game get together. Oh, I miss you, game get togethers, where people were upstairs and people were downstairs and people were drinking beer and people were on the patio and we were all playing games and it was great and I can't wait for that. But someone said, "Hey, you ever heard of the Star Realms game? It's like fifteen bucks. I got it on Kickstarter. I said, well, yeah, sure, bust it out. What's it, what, what is this? Is this some little uh, what is this a filler weight game?" And then I was like, "Oh my god, this is so good!" And I just, it's, it's just been there. It's, it's, it's. I'll play it over Dominion any day of the week. Not even close. But, but Orleans is a stopper. Orleans is just. It, it, I honestly believe if I were, if you were to say to me, "What do you think is one of the the best?" designed games of all time not your favorite game but, but the best designed games of all time for me personally i just feel like orleans is such an insanely well designed game the mechanisms mend so well and it makes it easy to learn and easy to teach and despite that there is just overwhelming layers of different things to do in the game and different paths to take uh it's still it, it's it's an approachable game and, and for that I, I will put it above star realms but star realms oh my god so good and the app, the app, oh, the app, uh, Tower of Blah Blah, Tower of London. This one was, uh, yeah, th so this one, full disclaimer, played this one only once, but it left such a strong feeling on me, I actively did not like this game. I did not. I'm gonna put it at the top of Forgettable Bad. Uh, I would rather revisit it than adapt, though, <laughs> because it is still deck building, and I love deck building. But yeah, this is from Colossal Games, and it was very attacky, and we just—it's like you're attacking each other. And me and me and Adam played it at one of our Gen Con, uh, our Origins Bonanza, which I love the Origins Bonanza. We play like <laughs> we play like sixty games over the weekend. That's all we do. We don't do interviews. It's just we do nothing but we play games for like ten hours a day, and then we shoot videos all night uh board game videos i don't feel like i needed to specify that <laughs> but, but, but the, yeah this one i just didn't enjoy it i don't remember why i didn't enjoy it but i was like yeah i don't ever play that again and we're going again we're going back for uh, yeah we're going forgettable bad again flip city 
this one i would re i would rather revisit than that but adapt you stay there so flip city is this this small box game from tasty mental game i know there was another one guns and steel which i would uh, i would much rather play i remember when i was bad mouthing guns and steel and now i have to talk about flip city i miss you guns and steel i miss you so much <laughs> we're down here in the dregs uh i don't have nothing to say i didn't like it i played it twice i was like i don't get it i don't want to play it ever again and it sits there because i didn't shoot a video on it i say to myself i will never get rid of a game until i shoot a video on it because that is my due diligence as a reviewer i said i'm going to do something for that game maybe it's going to be you know 10 years late <laughs> but it's coming baby it's coming i'm bad about that i am bad oh uh... But now I'm talking about it. Oh, have I done my service? <laughs> I don't, have I been freed? Has Dobby been given a sock, Mesa? Uh, Eminent Domain Microcosm. This is a really good game. This is a this is uh, this is actually one of my favorite micro games of all time. But what the hell does that mean? <laughs> because you know, it's two players. And it's based on the Eminent Domain game, which I believe is Seth Jaffe. And, and I do enjoy the Eminent Domain series, but I, I enjoy this more than that. And it's good. And I would rather play it than a lot of these games because it is... But, but, but eh, right there. And that's where we go. Because I, I would love to get Viral back to the table. I really wish I would have got rid of that one. Because I remember it was so mean. I think that was why it was just never going to get played. Uh, because of how mean it was. Now, this is Pathfinder the Adventure card game. I got, I got the wrong image here, but that's that giant box that came out. It was supposed to be it was supposed to be the big thing. Like, that box was massive. Like, that box was like this, and it was thick, and it just held cards, and it was barely even full when it first came out. I remember seeing everybody carrying this around at Gen Con when it came out. This was a big game of the show. And then they had an app, and I remember the, I dabbled in the app. The app was good. And this is one of those games, I'll be brutally honest with you, this honestly, you know, this is pro this might be one of those ones in the RV, with me and my wife, if she likes this game. But for now, forgettable good. Top of the forgettable good, though. I'll show you some respect there. But I don't remember what I liked about you, I played you like three or four times, and I played you another five or six times on the app, and I still don't remember a dang thing about the game. I remember you had to go through different decks, and find things, and it was cool, but not that forgettable. It was forgettable, unfortunately. Let me check you finish, but Orleans is the best bag builder of all time. Uh, yeah, I'm heading that way. I'm heading that way, but you know what? Actually, actually, Aeon's End's still down here, so I don't know. Teratozoic. For uh, what, what, what? What do I even think about this game? It's, I played. I played this like three or four times. I think. Um, I remember it was a Kickstarter, and I shot a video for it, and I think I enjoyed it enough to keep it and thought i might play it with my kids when he got older and then i think i replayed it and i was like oh yeah oh yeah this this doesn't this doesn't stand up as well as i remember and for that i'm gonna put it in the meh but above yeah you know what right there right there you can be next to baby dragon bedtime the other harry potter deck builder the one nobody knows about two player yeah there's a two player one it's more like a tug of war style game and i thought it was really good Really good. Try this one at Origins. Liked it a good deal. Not this really good. But, yeah, not this really good. But it was better than these. And, yeah, I'd rather re revisit it than Ascension. Put it there. Alright, woo, down to like the last ten. Alright, so, what is Eminent Domain? We talked about the microcosm. Let's talk about this one. Eminent Domain is a good game that I would like to revisit. I have a bunch of the expansions that I need to make content on. And I would rather revisit it than Resident Evil, because I did enjoy it a good deal. It had some really cool things going on. And it actually, I don't actually remember what the mechanism is, which is terrible, but, I'm, but if you get a chance to play this, I would highly recommend it. Because I remember there was something this game did that I was like, wow, that seems really unique. And, and, and this game's a little bit on the older side now. I think it's probably six, seven years old, maybe. Um, and I still don't think I've seen another game that did what it did. It, it had one of those, uh, what is it, like a, uh, a Puerto Rico-style vibe, if I recall correctly, where there was, like, you selected some actions, but based on what, what based on whose turn it was or something, maybe you got something a little bit better. I remember really enjoying it and thinking it was unique, and I need to get it back to the table. 
Okay, Family Feud Strikeout. I don't know why the hell this was in the deck slash pool slash bag building, but surprisingly, yes, I have played it, and in fact, you can even skip the rules with my skip the rules video on it. Uh, check in the card below. Uh, no, I'm not going to put a card on that. Um... It was good. It was fun. We played it once, and we're like, oh, this is fun. It felt a lot like Family Feud, and it was quick. It was simple. Oh, uh, yeah, it was quick and simple, which means, nope, we're ahead of Masters of the Galaxy. That may not seem fair, but whatever. <laughs> which one am I revisited? Well, uh, yeah, you know what? Let's do the test. Of all the games below here, would I rather play Family Feud than the rest of them? Yep. <laughs> I am nailing this! Alright, what do we got? Masters of the Gridiron. This is a really... Nope, nope, this is the wrong game. I'm thinking of Breakaway Football. Breakaway Football. If you want to play a uh, a football game, like if you really like football, like the X's and those, the inside linebacker, the 4-3, that sort of thing, I would highly recommend checking out Breakaway Football, uh, which is a Game Crafter game. The rules uh, are, are okay. I wish they were better, and I think if it got reprinted by by a big company, I think they could make them really spectacular, but it is a really good football game. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Meshers of the Gridiron, which came out uh, maybe about seven, eight years ago, I think. This was one of the first Kickstarters that I think I did, and it was a, it was a good, it was a good card game. It was a good football card game. Yeah, I'm going to give it some respect here, and I would rather play it than quite a few of these other games. It had different teams, uh, different players, and they would have different special abilities, and it was cool. <sighs> yeah, I'll swipe it right there. You know what? I'd like to revisit it more than I would Harry Potter. Because I know Harry Potter, I don't think there was, you know, it was, uh, I don't, this one has, I don't know, I don't need to explain myself about Masters of the Gridiron. Quarriers. This game. Such an interesting game. You want to talk about a game, you're like, oh yeah, I remember Quarriers. I feel like Quarriers is the ultimate that game. So this was uh, a bag building game. And this, was this the first bag building game? It, it might, it, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say this was one of the first bag building games that I can really remember. But it was a, you got the dice, and the dice had different things, and it essentially was, um, it, it ended up being the original... They took that and they made the the Dice Masters game. Where you, you remember where they, that was like all the freaking rage where it was like huge for a while. And unfortunately they couldn't meet the demand for... This is some behind the scenes stuff, but this really sucks. If you, if you remember the Dice Masters, part of the reason why it never got as big as they were hoping it was to get... And it did get big. I don't want to undersell the, the fact that it was a big deal for a while. But uh, uh, was but they could not get out enough stuff. Like people were buying them in bulk and it just they they couldn't get enough games out which really stunk uh because it could have i mean it could i don't know but anywho quarries never did it for me honestly i honestly i hate to say it but it's in the mech category it's at the top of the med rather play the baby dragon bedtime even if i'm playing baby dragon bedtime in the fast mode you know because quarries i still got it it's right there i don't have to review it i think it was a gift somebody just gave it to me because they didn't like it either um and it just did not do it for me because I was I was really hot on Dominion at the time. I was like, oh, it's, they were like, it's, it's like a deck builder with dice. And I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. And here's the thing. I do remember playing it twice. And I think we played it like with this certain mode. And then somebody, my buddy was like, yeah, you got to play with the other mode. Because that mode does suck. Everybody, But they were like, everybody knows that mode sucks. We all play with this one. And I was like, well, I didn't know that. And I'm not going back, man. Uh, so that's unfortunately uh, why Quarriors is in the mech category. <laughs> one day, Quarriors, we will, we will come back. Sipping Hennessy, I like it. I like it. Not sipping on anything, but I am uh, I'm riding high. Aeon's in on life. Feels good. Big water. Aeon's in. Uh, yeah, we got with respect up here. So here's where this goes. Uh, above Dominion, yes, absolutely. Unquestionably. You know, even with... Because here's the thing. Dominion's got a boatload of content, but so does Aeon's in. And and I and I haven't even touched Aeon Zen Legacy. I would love to because here's here's a little behind the scenes stuff for you. You want because this is Bowers Game Corner. I speak the truth. I speak the truth, which is why you should click on and subscribe if you don't, uh, if you haven't. Uh, but they actually, I used to do a, a lot of their Kickstarter stuff, and uh, I heard from a, a a former employee that they stopped having me do those because I put too many opinions <laughs> into them, and they're like, you know what? We love the positive stuff, but you know. Eh, Maybe we'll go somewhere else with the the negatives, and it wasn't like it was. And I don't want to make this sound like it was a bad thing. Like it wasn't like, oh man, like you got to take that down. They didn't. They just were like, okay, we're gonna go somewhere else for our previews. 
understandable because there's there's so many fish in the sea <laughs> but somebody was like yep that's why they stopped uh really really doing that i was like okay well whoops <laughs> i'm sorry i mean no i'm not apologizing because i give my opinions whenever you see a kickstarter video from me i will say it right now if it's a review that means that i recommend that game and if it's a preview that means for whatever reason i either can't recommend the game or i don't recommend the game so for for some of it it's like oh the game like I'll play like uh like what was it I did uh, I did this really really huge game and I only got to play the introductory thing to it and I was like oh my gosh this is amazing this is spectacular I think it was folklore of the affliction yeah folklore of the affliction is oh my gosh it's so good Lucy lost my copy ah uh, she borrowed it and then she she doesn't wear it is she'll find it one day because she's awesome I love Lucy uh, I love my wife more though so what, what, this is weird weird tangent uh, anyway but uh, she she lost the game and. Anywho, I did the Kickstarter for it, but I gave it a preview, and I specifically said in the preview, I think this is spectacular. However, I have not played enough of everything else to give it a, a good or bad, because, you know, who, who's to say it doesn't go completely go off the rails in Act 2? And, and I try to do that for my viewers. Uh, and so this is what, this is what I say. But, uh, Aeon Zen... It really, it really depends on if I'm factoring in Legacy. Am I factoring in Legacy? Because can you play Legacy with Aeon Zen? Because I haven't, I haven't tried it. So for right now, it stays behind Star Realms. But this one has room to grow. And potentially even your Super Orleans, I do believe. Now that being said, I have everything for Orleans. I've got the expansions. I've got the promos I, I could play. And I played, I played all the different expansions in the mean expansion too, which I don't really recommend. All right, here we go. Here's one. I don't remember what the heck this was. They cut it off. I want to get it. I want to get it for you though, because I thought it was a bad game. I really did not like this game, and I want to save you if you ever if you ever find this in uh, the the cheap shelf. I want to make sure. Uh, yeah, we're gonna put it right there. I want to make sure that you know what it is because it was really not an enjoyable game. So, I, and I'm actually need to do this for another game as well. So, quick uh, assault on Galactus Prime is a game we're about to talk about next. Uh, because that's a really unique game that comes in a bag. Uh, but the game that I'm looking for right now is oh my gosh, where is it? Because uh, I don't, I don't want you to, I don't want you to accidentally uh, buy this one before you try it. Emergence Genesis, the deck building game. This was on Kickstarter. They sent me a copy of it, and I was like, oh my gosh, I hate this game. And uh, yeah, so I would not recommend checking out that game. That's how much I care about you. That's how much I care about you. I, w I want you to know that game is probably not one that's worth your time. Assault on Galactus Prime, however, is. This is a really cool little micro deck building game. It has, like, micro cards. And you're in space. And it's from the company that you associate with war games. They have, like, that system where uh, if, if 500 people sign up for a game and it gets printed. I don't remember the name of the company. And they've made, so they made Dawn of the Zeds. And this is a good game. This is a good deck building game. I'm going to put it at the top of the Forgettable Good. Mm, no Pathfinder still. But but, but it was good. I don't remember much about it. I, I, I got a review because I used to be uh, a, a partner with uh, or sponsored by BoardGameSomething.com. What the heck was it? They used to do a rental service where they would ship you games. And they'd ship them back. And I got like three. It was the worst deal ever. I, they sponsored me. But they still just charged me. And they didn't even give me a discount. I don't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> Uh, anywho, I don't know. Poor choices on Bowers Game Corner. War and Kingdom. Meh. Meh. I remember this one was unique because it had, like, rows of cards that would face each other. And at the time, I thought it was good. And then I revisited a couple years ago. And I was like, eh, maybe it's not so good. So we're going to put this right here. Uh, no. Right here. there. I'd rather play it than Big Book of Magic still. All right. Uh, Clank. This is one that has very high potential to climb even higher, but I'm putting in the great category. I don't own it, but I probably played it three or four times, and every single time I've loved it. It's a push-your-luck deck-building game where you're going deeper and deeper into the earth. It's got a, a legacy uh, game, which one day I will own. Mark my words. That's going to be a Christmas present one year when some, my wife's like, do you actually want a game? I'm like, yes, Clank Legacy. I want to play it with the family. Uh, really love that game, and honestly, I would rather play it than Trains? Yes, I did. I liked it that much. And as you can see, you can clearly see deck building games. Uh, wow. Really love them. All right. Witches of the Revolution. Uh, meh. This one didn't do it for me. Did not do it for me. I don't, you know what? Ah, that's forgettable. I don't remember what I didn't like about it, so I can't really talk about it too much. But I still rather play the Big Book of Magic and War and Kingdoms. All right. 
King's Forge. This is a very generic game where you are trying to make jewelry as a, a dude in a mountain. Oh, you guessed it. You're a dwarf. Yeah, but it's a good game. It's a good game. Uh, forgettable good. But it's only forgettable good because it's not my game. My buddy Brandon has it. I've played it twice. I enjoyed it, and I would actually like to revisit it, especially with the expansion. So you know what? For that, I can't put it in the forgettable category. Because I remember it enough to tell you about it. Actually, yeah. So I think I would put it... Ooh. Right there. I really like King's Forge. Good game. All right. Here we go. Three more. Edge of Humanity. This is from Gold Knight Games. They got a very bad reputation. As they should, as apparently they had a, a game that they just didn't ship to America. They're like, eh, sorry, but you can back our next Kickstarter. <laughs> They've had like three more Kickstarters. I've actually reviewed one of their games since then. Uh, my buddy Pete hates them. Uh, Pete Gabriel, Peter Gabriel uh, of, uh, what, what's the name of the band? It's uh, Genesis. Yeah. Don't tell anybody. He probably wouldn't like it. Peter Gabriel hates Golden Age games for what they did with that Kickstarter. He was actually a uh, super background Kickstarter fun story anywho let's stop talking about it edge of humanity <laughs> it's a good game it, it is actually a very good game the box you know what i can't i can't diss on the game i mean you can diss on some bad kickstarter practices but this is a really good game uh top of the forgettable good right there i remember it was survival i remember enjoying it i remember the box being obnoxiously large it could have been in the same size box as uh where is it as uh that other one where is it? It could have been the same size. It should have been a Shards of Infinity style box. But it was in an Aeon Zen style box. Naughty. Alright. Dice Masters. Meh. Put it here with quarries. Never did it for me. I tried it a couple times. was like, I don't get it. I want to collect them. And I did collect them. Every time I played the game, I was like, not for me. And then we have Cthulhu Realms. They took Star Realms. Yeah, the, the Lost Child. Because they have Star Realms. This one was actually Tasty Rental Games. It's a really odd spin-off game. And it's good. It's not great. I'll put it right. Uh, nope, we're going lower. All right, there. Well, there you go. Those are my top 73 deck building, card building, pool building games of all time. Let me know in the comments what you think about the list. What's your favorite? What's your least favorite? Actually, I want to know your least favorite. And as always, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, please sure to click on that subscribe button next row. And come on next Saturday night where we check out the auction bidding slash games. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. And the stream now.